Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm here with Painting Paris in the Rain today. Hopefully, after I finish this video, you'll be able to paint Paris in the Rain. And this is part of the Color All the Things with Sandy series for Ellen Hudson that I love to do because I love to paint and color all the things in all the mediums. And this one is going to be an ode to Paris because it's hot as heck there, and I'm wishing for rain for them. I thought I'd talk a little bit about supplies. I don't do that a whole lot in these videos. I focus on the coloring. I stamped the image in Versafine Onyx Black, which is a really great waterproof ink, using my Daniel Smith watercolors. All the supplies, by the way, are listed in the doobly-doo. For attaching watercolor paper, I've gotten this question a couple times. Be Creative Tape is super sticky and works wonderfully. And also the dimensional adhesive, the big roll that I call the Precious, or the, the Scotch or 3M, is a really good adhesive too. Brushes, I use the silver black velvet brushes. The 12 and the 8 are the ones that I recommend. I'll be using both of them in this video. You can get a good point on both, and they also hold lots of water and pigment. And here's the stamp set from Reverse Confetti. Is this not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Oh my goodness. I've been a little obsessed with painting rain lately because I did three classes all about painting rain and coloring rain in different mediums. Yeah, I'm a little bit crazy about it. But I've mixed a little bit of Payne's Blue-Gray with some Cobalt Blue because Payne's Blue-Gray can feel a little on the oppressive side. And on a card, I wanted this to be a little bit more cheerful rather than just that kind of dark grayish color. Darker pigment at the top, a little lighter down at the bottom, but I'm going to put other colors over it. I lightened up some clouds in there in case some of them show. They may not by the time I get the clouds or the trees all painted. And then while it's wet, I painted some very thin watercolor in there for the trees. So I wanted some of that green to blend in with the background. I didn't want it to all be super hard charged in the front. So when you do that while it's wet, it's going to help to make everything feel like it's all part of one painting. And then on the bottom end here, I'm just going to put some horizontal streaks. I'll do that with a bunch of different colors as I go to create those reflections so it looks like water. In the center, I wanted to put my Eiffel Tower. And yes, you are going to be able to do an Eiffel Tower. I promise you it's not hard. So I wanted purple in here. I wanted to make a purple Eiffel Tower because there was a little girl I met who told me the, the joy of purple in paintings. And I tried purple trees after she told me I should make a purple tree. And I liked it. So you might see more purple. So this is a an imperial purple, just a very light haze of it so that I can get a little of that reflection going down the middle with that purple color and then throwing in more streaks at the bottom with a few other colors that are already on here. And once it was partially dry, not completely dry, partially dry, I mixed up a color that was partially the sap green and partially the Payne's Blue Gray. So I have a mixture that's more green and one that's more blue. And I can use both of those in the trees and get a really interesting mix of colors. And I'm going to paint blobs. These are just going to be really watery blobs in the background. And dropping in a little bit of the greener color into the bluer color, just playing around with letting the color mix. And at the edges, just making some little dancing dots almost, and then connecting a few of them so they look more like branches of trees. And I want a tree on either side, as if you're looking at the Eiffel Tower, there's this, this long kind of open parkway right in front of it that you can kind of stand and, and look down the whole thing. And it's lined with trees and things on either side. And, and I just had that, that idea of having, having the Eiffel Tower down at the end of this long view. And so I've got my second tree there and adding a little bit of, of detail down here. I'm tending the watercolor as it's coming up to the edges of the stamp. Sometimes it stops short of the stamp or, or it starts to, should I say, dry faster right beside the stamp than it will elsewhere. So tending it and watching with a dry brush to pull in some of those areas that might be drying faster than others and, and trying to marry them up so you don't get hard edges. So then I let the whole thing dry and look how beautiful and soft that is. Now it's time to add the Eiffel Tower. And the Eiffel Tower is basically a, a triangle with, that's kind of got a curved edge to it. So paint the two sides of it. And I, I find that if you do the two sides first, it, it helps you to get them to be even. And then they go up to a skinny point. And if you put a few crossbars in there and then put just some random hash marks, kind of little X's, 
It will give people that impression of being the Eiffel Tower. The other thing that's really important is to make an archway at the bottom. That's the other thing that makes the Eiffel Tower the Eiffel Tower. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfectly the Eiffel Tower for people to read it that way. And then I dabbed off a little bit with a baby wipe to soften that color. I can add a little bit more back in as I go. But I want this to be in the background, not glaring in the foreground. I added a reflection. This is an optional part here. But that, that oval reflecting down there in the water is going to tell people you know what you're doing when you're painting this. And look how easy that was to do. I just did a, a reverse of the oval that's at the top, that arch at the top of the... Eiffel Tower or on the bottom of the Eiffel Tower above the reflection. So there you go. Mixed up a little bit more of the blue green and green and Payne's blue gray kind of color and I'm going to put a few branches in here in the trees very loosely and what I find works really well to soften them so that they start to feel looser. If we leave all, all kinds of heavy paint on there it's going to draw attention to that. And if our line work isn't great, which mine isn't always great, especially on something like this, I don't want that to jump out at people. I want them to see the little girl and I want them to see the Eiffel Tower and the little ducky and stuff. I don't really want them to focus on those trees. I want them to just be a supporting element. So dabbing them off lightens them, softens them, and then they end up being a supporting element in the background rather than being something that's going to... to steal too much attention from the card. So just put little little dots and little blobs and let those be very soft in the background. It'll make them feel more rainy if they're nice and light like this. And then I added a little bit of a squiggle down below to make it look like there was a reflection of the tree trunk. And then added a little bit more of the horizontal lines. And that's really what makes it look like there's puddles and reflections on something like this. And my obsession with painting rain has just been that I love rain. I live in the Seattle area, and that's something that is always part of my life is rain. Uh, but I also just love making classes for people and things that you can use in your cards that help you to make better cards. You can use all these wonderful stamp sets. And I know there's just a ton of rainy themed little, little people that we can color and paint and stuff. So that I, my obsession is your obsession. So as you buy stamps, I also buy stamps and I need backgrounds for them and I share them with you. So for the little ducky, I could have used just the new gamboge and new gamboge was so bright against this that I mixed it with some yellow ochre, which is a duller kind of yellow. And the new gamboge gives me the brightness without having too much of of the, the darker or more naturalistic kind of yellow ochre, but it keeps it all in that same kind of rainy mode, that, that same soft colors. You could go really bright with them, but they tend to look really pasted on when you look, when you use a totally different colorway on something than the background. So if the foreground and the background are completely different um, in, in their temperature, it can make a real big difference. Now I want warmer colors in here for sure. So I'm adding, you know, different colors to this. I wanted to add some red. I wanted to use some red in her umbrella, but the red straight out of my palette, the anthraquinoid uh, scarlet was too much. So I just grabbed a little of my Payne's blue, gray, green mix and threw a little bit of that in there to soften the color. So when you're doing watercolors, you don't have to have and own every color out there. You can mix a color with something. If you want a, a duller red, mix it with something else in your palette and see what happens. I often just mix with whatever's in my palette. Because if I mix with whatever's in my palette, it's going to kind of match in the long run by, by just being in the same color family. For things like the hair, I have two browns in my palette. I have a burnt umber and a burnt sienna. And I will use those together in different mixtures. Sometimes if I want something a little redder, I'll use more of the burnt sienna. Other times if I want something a little more brown, I'll use more of the burnt umber. And if I want to go a totally different color, I can mix something else with it. So I love watercolor for the fact that you can just change it up and do all different kinds of things with it. So for reflections of the little people and the little ducky, the ducky is going to have a little bit of that yellow ochre kind of color because that's the color in the duck. I'm not making a shape that looks like a duck. 
And same with her. I'm not making a, a little girl an umbrella shaped reflection. I just added a few strokes of that yellow so it starts to pull the color from up above down into the, the area below so that it looks like it's reflecting the colors that are in her umbrella and, and in her boots and things. And if you get too much color on there, I got that, that really big streak of red there, it's just soften out with a baby wipe. And once you have that color in there, it starts to just feel like a, a really soft reflection. I wanted to add a little bit to the base underneath of my my Eiffel Tower because it just started feeling like it was floating out there and I wanted the tree on the left to feel like it was in front of the Eiffel Tower. So I added a little bit more detail to it using that same Payne's Blue Gray Green Mix color. And I'll add a little tiny more detail to those trees and just a little, little bit of fussy things that I like to do when I'm finishing a card and, and going overboard with it. And then I just added my little sentiment like the ducky is coming over to tell the little girl in Paris to cheer up. It won't be hot forever. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this video. I will see you again next month. Supplies for everything are available over on the Ellen Hudson blog as well as in the description down below. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.